Welcome back Cat5 class. We're going to go over problem 4-2. And you can also find this in the back of chapter 3 as problem 3-40 in the old textbook. The new textbook has it both in the back of chapter 3 and chapter 4. Okay, so just like on the previous handout, we're going to complete the three views. Now the author, she will ask you to uh, create the three views in AutoCAD from scratch but I am providing the AutoCAD files incomplete so that you can uh, complete the three views and not feel overwhelmed with learning AutoCAD and orthographic projections. That's the reason why I decided to provide you at least an incomplete AutoCAD file that you can start with and layers already included. All right, so let's go to AutoCAD. All right, so let me... Uh, First show you how I opened it because some of you are probably wondering, I don't see the file. I try and open the file and I don't see it. So I will provide you the uh, chapter four AutoCAD files. Don't forget to unzip or extract all, right? Don't forget to unzip the file. When you open it, if it appears to be empty, most likely you are in drawing templates. Show me only dot. DWT. These are drawing templates in AutoCAD. In the lecture video, I showed you how uh, these templates already have a title block and border and some layers set up. So if you're set to only filter or to only show and, and filter everything else, .dwt files, it's only going to show you .dwt files. Okay, so I want to go back to .dwg files and go to my folder. Okay, so in my case, I have that folder in my flash drive. So chapter four, and this was pre previously chapter three, part two. Okay, sorry for the confusion. So this is chapter four. Okay, so don't forget when you uh, download the zipped folder to right click, extract all, and that'll create a duplicate folder. Okay, and there are my files, and you can get previews, right? So, once again, if you wanna complete these files or start from scratch on your own by setting up your own layers, your own construction lines, etc., go for it. All right, so let's move on to problem 4-2, which I already have open. Okay, so I will also provide you with an e-drawing file a .3dxml file, so this is problem 4-2, .3dxml. Okay, so this is actually a pretty simple part. What will throw you off is the slope. The slope will throw you off. So let's go ahead and take a look at the front view first. Okay, there's the front view. Notice we have object lines going across. So let's go back. Notice they're missing. Okay, so let's do the front view first. So we have object lines going across. Let me start by uh, changing my construction lines. Well, I misclicked. Let me turn them back on. I meant to click on layers. I'll turn the construction lines to yellow. I know this magenta is a little hard to see on this video. Okay, there it is. Okay, so we have our front view. We're missing object lines. Going back to the 3D model. Okay, so we're missing these object lines. And all we have to do is simply follow the vertices of the side view. Okay, so all we have to do is follow the these corners, project across to create our object lines, right? Which represent the edges and the surfaces, right? So this edge, that surface, and so on. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our front view. Be pretty straightforward. Okay, so let's go to the visible object layer and use the line command and just go to the corners project across you know, I'll go ahead and uh, draw across you want to have ortho on guarantees a horizontal or vertical unless it snaps to something okay and right click enter and then we'll go to the other corner there it is right click enter okay so go ahead and use your grips to Shorten them to the correct length. 
And there it is. Hit escape. Done with the front view. That was it. Done with the front view. Pretty straightforward. Okay, let me turn off the construction lines for a minute. There we have it. Okay, so we're done with the front view. Now let's take a look at the side view. And then we'll do the top, which is not even there, right? You're going to have to do the top view from scratch. Okay, so let's take a look at the side view. There it is. So we have everything except this object line here. So see, that's where the slope ends. Oh, you can maybe call it a chamfer, but this is more of a slope surface than a chamfer. And we have that object line here. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw that missing object line. Okay, so using the line command from this corner, just go across, right? You want to have ortho on. And there it is. Right click enter. And now let's shorten it to the correct length. Done with the side view. Okay. Let me make these lines thicker. The object lines. I'm going to exaggerate. I don't want you to change them. I'm just going to make them thicker so we can see it in this video. 1.2. I'm going to double it. You can see there are a lot thicker. If you don't see the thickness, you want to have line weight turned on. As you can see, line weight. Okay, if you don't see this line weight icon, go to the very last icon here on the status bar, click on it, and chances are your line weight icon is not loaded in the status bar. See, mine is. If you don't see a check mark, click on it and it will load the line weight icon, which you can turn on and off. There you go. Okay, so let's do the top view now. Turn on my construction lines. Okay, I'm going to start by cheating first, right? Okay, so here's my 45. Let me change the thickness on this one. That 45 is important. Okay, so you always start with the box, right? You always start with the box for the top view, a box for the front view, and a box for the side view. And from the upper right corner of the front view box, you draw a 45. And that guarantees that everything will line up. Eventually, you'll be doing this on your own. All right, so we are in the visible layer. Okay, so let me use the line command. And from this, for this right corner, I'm going to go straight up, hit the 45, and I'm going to go across. And then I know I've got to line up with this one. See that? I've got to line up with this edge, the furthest left most extreme point on the front view. Click. And notice how this lines up, right? Notice how this lines up with the uh, leftmost extreme point, extreme point on the side view. Hit escape. I'm just doing this so I can show you where all these lines come from. And then we have one coming from, right, from this vertex straight up. These are orthographic projections. And right click enter. Okay, so we know that our top view is inside this box. Okay, so I can go ahead and now shorten these to the correct length. I'm going to need to go in and do some adjustments, but there it is. So everything is supposed to line up. And as you can see, escape to deselect. Let me get rid of the evidence that I cheated. And here we go. Okay, so that's how straightforward, you know, you create a box, use orthographic projections, use your 45. It's pretty straightforward to project, hit the 45, go across. And for the front view, just go straight up. And that gives us our overall length, right? It's the same length as the front view. And our depth, same depth as the side view. It should be. It's the same object, right? Okay, so let's go back to our 3D model. Okay, there's the front. Let's go to isometric view. Let's take a look at the top view. And we pretty much have the top view halfway done. We have the periphery, right? Or the perimeter of the top view. Now all we need to do is represent the steps. As you can see, there are the steps. So these drop down and this slopes downward towards the right. Even though from the top view, it looks flat. It's actually sloping down towards the right. Okay, so we need to draw these steps. 
Okay, so let's go back to uh, AutoCAD. All right, so we need to draw each step. So we're gonna go straight up from the front view and we're gonna go from the side view, hit the 45 and across. So let's go from the side view first, which is tougher. Line, point, line command, make sure you are in the visible white object layer. So this one's already taken care of. Let's go to the next vertex, hit the 45, go across, right click enter, go to the next vertex, straight up, hit the 45 and across, and right click enter. And we already took a, take care of this vertex, right? It's already there. Let's delete the evidence. Delete. And we can now shorten these. Now we don't know if we're at the correct length yet, but we know it's somewhere inside the box. Okay, hit escape. Okay, so we got the three steps, but now we don't know uh, the lengths. Let's go back to the 3D model. See, we have the three steps, one, two, three, and they have different lengths, as you can see. So this one's shorter, medium, large. All right, so let's take care of the first one. So we have this object line. Okay, so here it is from this vertex here. Okay, so let's use the line command. And from this vertex here, we're gonna go straight up. And there's the first one right there. Right click enter to exit. So now let's go ahead and shorten this to the correct length. Bam, there it is. Hit escape to deselect. We took care of the first one. See how easy that was? Now let's go to the second one. Okay, so here's the second one down here. Use the line command. Go straight up. So again, we're doing the second step. Go straight up. That's where it stops. Right click enter. And now we can shorten it to the correct length. Bam, there it is. Hey, it's starting to look right. Hit escape. Okay, now we have the third one. Okay, so we took care of the first one, second one, and now the third one. There it is, the object line. Notice, all we have to do is line it up with this vertex in the front view. So we took care of this vertex, this one. Now we're going to the third one to draw the third object line. Okay, let's go back. Line command. So go to the third vertex. So one, two, three, go straight up. That's where it ends, right click enter, and shorten it to the correct length. Hit escape to deselect, escape on the keyboard. Okay, let's turn off these uh, yellow construction lines. Uh, I don't think we're gonna need them anymore. Okay, so there it is, but hey, let's wait. Let's, let's, let's cheat. Let's use the uh, answer key, let's go back. And there it is, there's the front, my mistake, front, top view. Ooh, the, I forgot the line here. Oh, I forgot the solution. So, in the solutions, I'll send you the correct one with the object line going across. I missed that. Okay, so I'll send you the correct one. Okay, notice these object lines don't go all the way across. So we're gonna have to erase this portion and that portion in our AutoCAD drawing. Or we can just simply shorten them. And there it is, hit escape. And once again, on the answer key, I forgot this object line, but I will update it and include it on the attachment on our on your email. And I will also upload it in onto, into Canvas. All right, so hit escape, we're done. Okay, so if you want, you can stop here. Those of you that wanna insert a title block and border, keep following along. If you uh, decide not to use a Title block and border, that's fine, it's optional. These problems are worth 10 points. I think the last one is worth 15 on this handout. The last handout, each problem was worth five points. Now these are worth 10 points, okay? So they're gonna be increasing in value. We're gonna be doing less problems, but tougher problems, but they'll be worth a lot more points as we go along. 
Okay, so don't forget to save your work. File save as, and we'll call it complete, and save. But if you want to use your initials, that'll work too. And notice, look at the top, it's problem 4-2 with my initials. Okay, so if you want to stop here, that's fine. Those of you that want to uh, learn how to insert a title block and border. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go to the title blocks uh, file. So this will be also uploaded into Canvas, and I will also email you this file with title blocks. Okay, so I'll send you this title blocks folder or uh, file. Okay, so notice the tabs. I can go back to the first tab, which is my drawing. Next tab is the title blocks. The first one is if you want to start a drawing from scratch, right? If you want to do something from scratch, go to the start drawing here. It'll start from scratch, start a new uh, AutoCAD.dwg file with only one layer, the zero layer, the default, right? Let's go back to our problem, 4-2. Okay, so we're going to insert a title block. So I'll show you how to insert it, insert it first into uh, model space for those of you that choose to do it in model space. Okay, so let's go to title blocks. And I know some of you are going to want to use the B size, right? A size is a little bit too small. If you want to use A size, go for it. If you want to use B size, let's go to the B size tab. Select the title block. And then you're going to hit Control C on your keyboard to copy it. Go back to your drawing, then hit Control V as in Victor. And you don't have to put it at zero, zero. So if I want, I can just, just the title block, or if you want to place it at zero, zero, turn on your object snap. There it is. So I lined it up with the green vertical axis and the red horizontal axis and I can just simply move my my geometry or my views using the move command oh let me turn off ortho it's not that I'm shaky it's not my age it's that I have ortho on and I have object snap on let me turn off object snap there it is okay and we're good okay hit escape now, uh, one thing I did forget to mention is you can always scale. So you may have to do it with the millimeters drawing. So currently this, we're working on inches. Now, the AutoCAD just thinks it's unitless. It just sees units, doesn't see millimeters, doesn't see inches. Okay, so we may have to scale our views up or down. So if your views are too small or too large, select them. And you can do a scale, right? You can use scale, pick a reference point to scale from. I'll pick the bottom left corner. See, you can make it larger, smaller. So you may be in a situation where your views are way too small for your title block and border, or way too large. So you can use scale and use nice round numbers or nice round fractions. Okay, so let's say I wanted to go half scale or one to two, one divided by two, which is 0.5. I can go with 0.5, enter, right? If that's too small, let's scale it up. Use the scale command again, pick a point to scale from. Let's say I wanted to go uh, double or quadruple, right? Avoid using odd numbers. You wanna go two, four, eight, 10, 16, and so on. Okay, so if I want to go four times in the command line, I'm going to type in four. Let's make it four times the size. Enter. Oh, that's way too big, right? Undo, 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 right? Let's undo. Or control Z to undo. Undo. There it is. Let's go back. Select it. Go to scale. Or you can type in scale in the command line. Scale. Pick a reference point. And in the command line, I'm going to type in double. So twice the size and enter and we're just back to where we were earlier all right so 
Okay, so if you want to add a name, you can move the name over to the text box or title block, I should say, if you want to type in your name. Let me turn off object snap. I don't want it to be snapping. I want more freedom, as you can see. So I turned off object snap so I can move the text wherever I want. Or I can always uh, adjust my text, like put it in the middle, center it. Okay, so double click on the text and you can type in your name. Oh, you want to go with capital letters. Okay, if the text is too small or too large, you can always double click, highlight, and you can type in a different uh, text height. If you're using the ANSI or ASME American Standards, you want to go with 0.16. I'm not going to take any points on or off if you're using a different standard, but that's the American Standard. Text height is 0.16 inches. AutoCAD uses 0.18. If you're using millimeters, uh, in the past jobs I've had, we use three millimeters, three and a half millimeters. And enter. Click away. Let me increase the size of my box using the arrow. There it is. And hit escape. Okay, so I'll let you play around with the title block. I know some of you want to have something to print out and put on your refrigerator so you can show it off, right, to your friends. Or your family members look what I did cool right okay so now those of you that choose to put a title block and border on the layout right so here is like putting a title block and border on your picture okay so once again if you take your iPhone take your iPhone I don't know what I'm clicking on, but so if you wanted to put a frame on a picture, right? So if you want to put a frame around a picture that you have saved in your phone, you can do that. Those of you that want to put it on layout, in other words, you want to put a cover, right? A hard cover, a rubber or plastic cover on your phone to protect it, right? Okay, so the way we currently have it, we actually place the title block and border around our picture. You want to put it as a cover on your phone, right? A hard cover. Let's delete this. And we'll go to Layout tab. Go to Layout. And some of you may prefer a 11 by 17 sheet size. Okay, so I'm going to go to Layout. Right click. So I right click on the layout to change the sheet size, page setup manager. Currently it's eight and a half by 11. If you want, keep it there and use an A size title block and border, go for it. I'm gonna increase mine, I'm gonna modify it. Again, title block and border is optional. Okay, so look at all the different sheet sizes. Okay, if you don't see all these options, look for something that says plot or E plot. So it assumes you're trying to connect to a plotter which gives you more sheet sizes. If you're trying to print to your personal printer, a small one especially, it's not gonna give you a, a lot of options as far as sheet sizes. It'll just give you a, the default ones, the limited ones. Okay, so go to ePlot or something plot, and that'll give you a lot more options to pick from. Okay, so let's go with the Nancy standard, American National Standard. Do not use architecture, unless you want to use that, right? If you're into architecture, you want to use an architectural standard size, go for it. Okay, so I'm going to go 11 by 17, ANSI, B size, 11 by 17. And later on, I'll show you how to plot. We can spend a whole hour on learning how to plot, whether it's AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Inventor, CATIA, none of them are easy. There's because there's a lot of options. Okay, so I'm gonna hit OK. And watch my sheet size change in size and close. Bam, see it's a lot larger, there it is. Okay, so let me insert a title block and border. Let's go back to our title blocks and border file, AutoCAD file, I'll go to B size. Okay, make sure you are in the B size if that's the size you're going with. Select it, Control C to copy. Let's go back to your drawing and control V 
and just center it. Oh, I don't see the print area. It's okay. What's center? Don't go to the corner, but just try it and center it inside the sheet and click. Okay, so I'm going to take this viewport. If you want to create a viewports layer, go for it. I'll just put it in the zero layer. It's hard to see the zero layer. Let me go to layers. The zero layer is a default layer. Instead of yellow, let's make it blue so we can see it. Okay, and I'll make it thicker so we can actually see it. Nope, don't see the line weight. Nope. All right, so now we can take our viewport, make it larger. Okay, and I'm going to hit escape. Okay, so now I'm going to change the scale of my views. Double click inside. Okay, so now we've turned on our iPhone or smartphone and we want to look at one of our pictures. Maybe you took a selfie early this morning, right? And you want to zoom in. Okay, so let's change the scale. Okay, you don't want to use an ugly scale like 0 0.465430. You want to use a nice round number, one to one. And there it is. And then I'm going to hold on to the wheel to pan over. There it is. And I'm going to remove your name. I'm going to delete that. There it is. So I deleted the text, your name, out of the model. I'm going to put my text on the sheet. Okay, so I'm satisfied. It's one to one. Okay, so I can either double click outside the viewport or I can go ahead and down here click on the word model. And it'll take me to paper space or layout. There it is. So we're outside the viewport now. When I zoom in and out, it does the whole thing. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add text. So click on text. I'm going to add my text. So I turned off object snap so I have more freedom of where to place it. So I'll put my text in here. Okay, you can type in your name, use capital letters. All right, there it is. And again, uh, if you want to change the text height, 0.16 is the American standard, 0.16 inch text height. And enter, there it is. Okay, if you want to give it a sheet number, so sheet one of one, right? So let me go ahead and add text here. And I could say one dash one or one of one. Let me change the text height. Once again, I'm going to go with 0.16. And click outside the text box to exit. Now, the reason, uh, the, reason the, the text is coming out real thick is because it's going into the visible layer. Okay, so currently I have visible layer active. So you should create a text layer so i'm going to go to layer properties forgot to mention that in the lecture okay so i'm going to insert a new layer i'm going to call it text keep it simple avoid using symbols spaces or else it may reject the name you give it okay let me click away and it takes on the properties of the layer we have currently active visible so let me change that i don't want to make it too thick i'll make it a uh, you know what let's just see default I shouldn't have to put line weight on text. Hit OK. And I'll leave it as white or black. Okay, if it's a white background, it'll show it as black. If it's a dark back or black background, it'll show it as white. Okay, so we're good. Let's go ahead and exit. So I'm going to take my text, my thick, bold text, right? Let me select them and move them over to the text layer. There it is. A lot cleaner. Hit escape. Okay, so I'll let you fill out the rest on your own. Now, one thing I did forget to mention in, uh, in our lecture, but it, we'll mention it more later on towards the end when we do a full, uh, complete uh, set of drawings, is revision. Okay, so revision, typically when you start with the brand new drawing and it's completely... Uh, 
dimension, notes, you got everything on it. Typically, you'll start with the new revision. And some companies like to use a little dash, like a minus sign. Or no change, meaning it's the original, right? The original one. Instead of using OG, they use NC, no change. Okay, and some companies will start with the letter A. You go in alphabetic order. So this can be revision A. Okay, and I'm in the wrong layer once again. And I should change the text height to 0.16. Again, that's optional. I'll leave it up to you. Okay, so revision. So once you're done with the drawing, let's say you have it all dimension, you have all the notes, what material, how many you need, you have a part number, you have names on there, you have dates, units, you're using inches for this one and so on. Let's say it's a complete drawing, right? And you can go back to your textbook. The author, she gives you some good examples in chapter one and two of what a drawing should look like once it's fully dimensioned, notes, title block and border and everything on there. Okay, so you need to send it out to a shop for a quote. If you don't have a shop in house, in other words, your company doesn't have a machine shop, you can send it out to quote, send it to a few local machine shops. All right, I'll make that part for you out of aluminum. I'll charge you a hundred bucks per part, so on. But let's say uh, you ended up changing the height Let's say uh, later on, even though it's already quoted, okay, we'll make it for a hundred bucks. The machine shop that wins the offer, all right, a hundred bucks per part, good. We need 10 parts, but let's say uh, before they start machining, let's say we change the height. Let's say this was too short. It's like, oh, we gotta make it a half inch taller, right? So then, since you already released this drawing, it went through the process of names, signatures, approval, it went through the document control process, and this was already quoted, and the drawing was finalized and approved, you gotta stop the machine shop and call them and say, hey, you know what, uh, we need to make a change. Have you guys started machining? Like, no, we haven't started machining yet. Okay, we're gonna send you a new drawing. The part is taller. So now you have to change the revision to a B. You just go down the uh, the alphabet, right? Avoid using letters like O, I, L, because uh, they can be confused for numbers or other letters. So we do uh, avoid using some of the letters in the alphabet. Now, when you make a change, you have to go up here to the top, upper right corner. Okay, so we released A, right? The the original one, so some start with the letter A, others start with the minus sign, others start with the NC, no change, and then start going through the alphabet. So let's go through A as our first one, and you just call it initial release. Okay, so you'll see something like, like this. You'll see revision A, and I'll just tab over. You see IR, or initial release. Text a little, it's a little bit too large for this, but go ahead and change it. 0.16, very good, there it is. Okay, let me, uh, now you should have a table here with columns and rows. Okay, and then I'll put the date, you know, whatever the date is. Okay, type in the date. Oh. Then like that, and you want to use who approved it or who. So this would be your supervisor or somebody in your group that's assigned to approve a drawing. Once your drawing is complete, they redline it, they check for mistakes, everything's good, you fix the mistakes. So you put your initials, your first name, last name, whoever approved it. So these are the initials of the person that approved it. And once again, I'm in the wrong layer. Well, let me hit escape. Okay, there it is. And again, we would have rows and columns here. So 
it looks more professional. Okay, so this is when you first released it, right? It was first released. But you made the height change, right? So then you have to re-release it, right? Okay, so think of this as the director cut, the director's cut uh, of the film, right? Okay, so you're going to re-release it. So it's the Star Wars 20th anniversary, and we're going to re-release this, right? Make some uh, improvements on the quality of the film. Okay, so let's go back. Okay, so I'm going to hit enter. And now we're going to release a B revision. So once it's been fixed, and you have to also list what were the changes. Oh, height. Height was 1 is now 1.5. Okay, so you want to put a, you want to keep it simple. Say what this you got to stay what the change was. Okay, so the height was one inch. Now it's one and a half. Okay, and then type in the date once again. And the initials whoop, of whoever approves this. Typically the same person. Okay, you also want to put a zone. Hey, where is this uh, dimension you're talking about that used to be one and now it's one and a half? Let's see. You know Instead of one and a half, let's make it two. This makes this shorter. And I can fit it inside. Okay, click outside the box. Okay, so for zone, you have to give them a location. Now this one doesn't have letters, so most title blocks and borders should have letters and numbers running along the top and the side. So that way it's easy to locate something. So let's go to, uh, ah, let's go to the internet. I'm going to type in blueprints. So this was the old school way of making drawings. And because of the chemicals that were involved in making blueprints, I think it was ammonium or ammonia and yeah, and it did have a bad smell to it. We had, we had to use liquid before we, before they came up with these fancy printers, right? And inkjet printers, now you got 3D printers and so on. The old school way was by chemically producing the drawings. Okay, this was before we had all that fancy ink. Oh, I don't see a drawing with, uh, with zones. Oh, actually, there's one right there. Okay. Okay, so along the side here, we're going to see letters and numbers. Let's see if I can zoom into this. So let's say we were going to change this dimension, right? So up on the upper right corner, under our new revision, we're going to say, hey, uh, we changed this dimension. Well, which dimension? There's a bunch of dimensions. Which one is it? Well, it's in... Notice this is A. I know it's hard to see, but this is the letter A, B, C, D, and so on. So we're going to say, okay, it's in D. This is four, five, six, seven, eight. So you're going to say, look at zone D, eight. Oh, you sunk my, my battleship. You got me. So it's just like battleship, right? You call it out D. A, that's where the dimension's at, all right? So, go back to AutoCAD. So if we change this height here, you would say, yeah, D, A, that would be our, our zone. So here for our zone, we would put D8, that's where the change is at. Okay, so I'll put a new text. And I'll call it D8. And let's fix the text height. 2.16. Okay, so double click to do a zoom fit. There it is. Okay, so let's 
slightly off. Let's go ahead and move this down. There it is. And again, you would have a table with lines, of columns, and rows. Okay, so there's your title block. Again, this is optional. If you want to fill out all the information, make it look professional. Okay, so you can Google blueprints or drafting drawings. This will get a good feel of what a title block should look like. All right, so that's the end of this uh, video. You can notice the model doesn't have the hardcover. The hardcover for your smartphone or the case is on the sheet of paper. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and save my work. I already have it as my name or part 4-2 with my initials. So all I have to do is save it. All right, see you in the next video.